So formally, uh, good evening to all of you. Many of you are joining from different parts of uh, the Gulf countries. So <laughs> there we are in a different time zone altogether. So that's why I had to specify that we'll be starting at 6 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Right. So uh, formally, a very good uh, evening to all of you. And I'm happy that so many of you are attending this webinar to understand how we can gamify uh, mathematics. Not only mathematics, actually, we can gamify any <laughs> subject and to make the classes interesting because you know that children are so, uh, it is very difficult to control them in the classes because 40, 50 of them there and the lecture method will not work anymore. And with the new national education policy, experiential learning, differentiated learning, PBL, so many methodologies that are coming, I think uh, gamification of maths is very, very, very important right from class one, uh, maybe from the nursery KG also, but I am today dealing with only KG uh, one to 10. Right, so uh, we start with the session for today. And as I have told that in case uh, you can always stop and ask questions at any point of time. So the main crux of today is how to make your maths classes interesting. Because unless you create interest, children, you know, have the span of attention for today's kids. <laughs> how many minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, without that, uh, you will not be able to catch their attention. Older kids, of course, a little more, maybe 15 minutes. But the younger kids today are so restless. The reason being because they are into a technical age. They are into uh, Facebook and social media. They'll post a photograph, their instant gratification. They require instant gratification. So when they post something, they need likes on that. If there is no likes on that uh, post, then they'll get depressed, right? So same thing happens in the classroom. They are, uh, they are playing video games, which are so fast. You know, it's about shooting and car racing, everything was so fast. And when we are doing our lectures in the class, what happens is that they are not able to relate to that process of verbal communication. That's the biggest problem. But when, as soon as you see the body language of kids will uh, change as soon as they're out. Look at the pictures that they have selected. You know, somebody playing with sand dune, somebody is on the grass. The body language of all kids will change as soon as you are out or you give them some games or toys or something else rather than the normal, uh, what goes on in the class. They're very, very happy. So that is what the aim of today is, that how to make your maths classes interesting and how to make it lively so that your kids are going to enjoy your classes. So first of all, every topic that you take needs to be related to real life because the common problem that we face is that uh, kids always ask, sir or ma'am, why do we study this? Where are we going to, where are we going to use this in real life? That's the biggest problem. So we need to learn that everything has got some historical background. We need to know about some mathematicians, how it was discovered, what was the process. It will be easy for us to explain things uh, to uh, kids when they know the real life explanation of that. Now see, this is a simple picture of snowflakes falling, but every snowflake is different. Every, it has got mathematical shapes, right? And there's a very beautiful uh, site, which I'll be telling you in the end, that is many of you must be using it, www.geogibra.org. Many, I'm sure that many educators are already using this. Uh, uh, it's a very good site to explain all concepts, basically from uh, at the elementary school to the middle school to the high school, right? So that's why we are concentrating on this one to 10. So this is a very good site. If you're not using it, please do use it. And I will be demonstrating a little bit towards the end so that I can cover what I have prepared uh, first. And then I will show you, show you uh, what happens in this website and how we can uh, take a live demo of uh, congruency, similarity, Pythagoras theorem, simple addition concept, greater than, less than. So all levels we can demonstrate that square rectangle everything you know like uh, can be demonstrated shown to the kids right so uh, we move on further to concrete examples uh, now see <laughs> i have put something and there is something unusual about this uh, what is the unusual thing that you notice about this slide what is unusual about this slide? Can anyone tell me? You can unmute yourself and tell. What is unusual it's about this? Upside down. <laughs> yes. It's upside down. Yes. Yeah. It's upside down, right? It's written upside so, down, right? Yeah. Traditional so, thought, math is boring and tough. Absolutely. So there is a traditional way of looking at things. So the moment you see this slide, uh, it's not traditional, right? Because the tradition is to put everything in order. 
right? So I have personally seen, now suppose you also do this experiment, you call children to the board and say, draw a triangle. Most of them will draw a triangle like this in the same manner because the traditional thought is like that. Now, how many different types of triangles are there? We have right angle triangles, we have acute angle triangles, we have obtuse angle triangles, but very rarely you will find somebody drawing a right angle triangle or an obtuse angle triangle. Everybody will more or less draw an acute angle triangle. You can try out this uh, uh, and uh, you can check for this uh, yourself. So uh, uh, this is one thing that uh, it's very, uh, you know, the traditional way. So traditional way is something which uh, is, uh, we need to break away from that. So similarly, like for example, we call the students, everyone will do something very traditionally. And when you break the, from the tradition, okay, the moment we write something like that, one day you go and write the topic upside down, you will find a lot of reaction. So otherwise they will not react. Okay, you will go and write that today's topic is addition. But uh, if you uh, make one spelling error there, or you know, you will uh, write it upside down, immediately the children will get excited. Sir, ma'am, you have done this wrong. Okay, so I've got your attention now. So that's a traditional thought. The traditional thought is maths is boring and maths is tough, right? So we need to break traditions and we need to move from there, right? So, uh, yeah, one second, okay, yeah. So just a reminder, some people are messaging that uh, uh, the, they are not able to join, etc. Please remember, I have disabled all the security, this thing. So if you find that there is any problem, uh, please don't worry. Uh, you need, you can just exit and enter whenever you, if you are having any network issues or anything like that, uh, kindly uh, exit and enter that if you're able to not hear or whatever it is, right? So please make sure that uh, I have not put any restrictions I have not put any restrictions, so you can enter and exit at any point of time. Thank you. So uh, kindly do not message me because I, I will not be able to see. It is better that, uh, you know, I will be seeing off and on only because I'm concentrating on the webinar right now. So very difficult to concentrate the chats here, conduct the session and see the WhatsApp message too. Okay, so kindly excuse uh, if I don't see your message. Right, <clears throat> so how to gamify our classes? How to gamify our classes? There are lots and lots of traditional ways. Again, I'm, uh, there is a traditional way. So if you go to the traditional ways, what happens is that you will get the list. Okay, you do, uh, there are, these are the apps which can be used, or uh, this is how we do it. That's, that's what Google tells you. But actually what happens is that over a period of time, the children get bored with that. Okay, you try to use Kahoot quizzes. You use uh, any other uh, apps. Initially, they'll be excited. After four or five times, they will say, okay, uh, this is not interesting, sir, or interesting. So what will happen is that we need to devise methods by which uh, each chapter is very unique from the other. That's important. Okay. So how do we go do that? By giving concrete examples. Now, I'm going to share concrete examples that uh, I have done and my students have done and how they're using it in real life. That is very important because what happens is uh, in real life, are all these maths that we do in school, uh, is it really practical? That's a big question mark, but I'm going to show how people are doing it. I mean, some of the students who have done all this, I have clicked uh, pictures of what they do and I'm going to share it with you so that you, you can also, you know, show it to your students. See, this is what uh, uh, people are doing with uh, the basic maths. It's not very high five maths, very basic maths. So concrete examples will always uh, help children to understand. Okay, so why do we study this? Uh, trigonometry, why do we study similar triangles or congruency or anything, you know, so we need to give concrete examples. Hello. So how do we give this concrete examples? Uh, now uh, I'm going concrete. to talk that in detail. Okay, so I think somebody's mic is on, it will be better if you are on mute, unless you want to ask a question, you are most welcome to unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Because it will disturb others. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so creativity and engagement, so the most important thing is to engage students. Students become very restless. They can't sit down there 40 minutes uh, doing nothing. You are talking, talking, talking and doing nothing. Uh, they are not doing anything. You are prepared for something and you want to vomit out that content, right? So that's important that we engage them. How? By giving some uh, puzzles, worksheet, crosswords. So all that I will be telling you in concrete. Now I'm just giving you the headings. So how to engage. Engagement is very important for joyful learning. If, if the students are not engaged in anything, practical work, 
okay some people think that practicals is only for 9 to 12 we can start practical right from class 1 some people think that case studies is only for 9 to 12 case studies can be done from class 1 onwards with concrete examples as we proceed further i'll be showing this uh, how to go about it right allow students to make their own problems this is very very important and they get excited now see or we give questions they answer but when they make their own questions with their names okay suppose there is a student named ajay he is studying in class 4 and the teacher says ajay why don't you make a question uh, on profit and loss so he will frame the question ajay goes to a shop to buy a pen costing rupees 20 okay and he sells it for 30 find the profit find the loss simple so when they are making questions and giving it to others they get excited i am making the question and you know the, their name is there for smaller kids it works when you are putting their name so oh, your name has come in that question you know they, that excitement is that so pick up some students name from the not the traditional names which are given in the book so you can always make your classes interesting by picking up the let's say the naughtiest person in your class who normally disturb and suddenly he is the star attraction on the class okay i have a shivansh in my class very naughty fellow and then i will say shivansh goes to the market to buy and suddenly shivansh who is you know troubling others he is very excited and listening of the questions about it and everybody shivansh shivansh you know so he becomes the center of attraction and he is listening so this is one of the method engaging so so that otherwise what will happen why do these children disturb because they are not interested so as soon as they have made the center of attraction, suddenly they'll feel excited. Not in that class. Next class also they are waiting. Sir may take my name or ma'am may take my name in that question. Okay, so uh, engage the students and encourage the students to make questions like that. Changing names will not change the concepts, right? So why worry about names? Whether it is their name or somebody else's name. So why should we insist on the name? They can make their own names so, they, so that it becomes more interesting for them. For the smaller kids, this works a lot. And encourage project-based learning. This we are already started, art integrated learning. I'll talk more about that because that's a huge topic. And uh, you know how to integrate art and uh, uh, into our maths. So everything can be integrated into art forms and then it becomes more beautiful. Music, I'll be showing some examples how to integrate music, art, uh, and uh, you know, role plays, uh, the, uh, the play modeling, all these different forms, drama, etc. Right. So make it hands-on, never uh, be theoretical. So if you are attending a workshop and uh, suppose I decide that I'm going to talk for the next one and a half hours and I will not allow you to speak, I'll put you on mute, how will you feel? Very bold, half of, the, half of you may leave also. Now you have the option of unmuting yourself and answering the questions any point of time. So that gives you a little bit of freedom and that you can participate whenever you want. So some teachers, what they do is that let me complete the session, then you will ask questions. They don't like students asking questions. Why? There are two reasons. Why when students ask questions, first of all, they don't know the answers. They're not confident. They're not prepared uh, about that. Or they dis it disturbs the flow, especially younger teachers who are not prepared or even older teachers, nothing about young and old. If you're not prepared for a class, what happens is that your flow gets, <laughs> your flow is not there. So you have prepared that for 20 minutes. Okay, let me finish that blah, 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 blah. Okay, now you ask questions. And by the time, you know, the child's question must have disappeared or he may not be interested. So allow the children to, you know, ask questions. Asking questions is one of the best ways to judge the quality of a teacher. Because if you are encouraging questions, that means you are a confident teacher. Ask any questions and I'll get back to you. And not necessary that you know, be humble enough to accept. Okay, better you've asked this question. I don't know this answer. I'll find out tomorrow and tell you. Okay, it's better to don't give wrong answers. Okay, that you you should be courageous and brave enough to accept that because no teacher will know everything. But at the same time, don't discourage. Nobody will ask me questions. You are disturbing me, and then the child is branded. That should not happen. So this is one way where we can end. You see, initially when the kids are small, they will have a thousand questions, isn't it? When they are one year, two year, three year old, what is this? How it is made? This this. As they grow older. You know, people start, uh, don't allow them to, uh, you are asking too many questions. You shut up and it is like that. You accept like this. Why is the grass green? It is like that. They may not, the parents may not know the answer. The teachers may not know the answer. So they will say, you don't, you are just disturbing. You go and find out from here and there. And what will happen? Continuously, when the child is not allowed to ask questions, they will never ask questions. And that's the problem with the Indian education system that we don't allow our children to ask questions. Uh, uh, a majority of the cases, what happens is the teacher is 
uh, not encouraging enough. So we as maths teachers, especially our subject is, you know, they in Hindi we call it badnam hua padha, you know, as because they say that, you know, maths is the toughest subject, maths is, uh, we don't have aptitude, everything is about maths, right? The other subjects, they more or less <laughs> get through. And maths teachers are the dreaded people. They are the ghosts of the school, you know. So we have to change that image. And how do we change that image? By making people love maths. So we ourselves need to change our tactics. We ourselves need to uh, build a rapport with the students and uh, kids will feel um, uh, attached to you if you make your classes interesting. And once you they like you, they will start enjoying the subject, okay? Don't force them to, this is very important. You have no choice but to learn maths up to class 10. 11, you can make a choice. That's, I've heard many teachers saying that, okay? Up to 10, there is no choice, so better study. So these are the things that uh, normally <laughs> we, including me, I am not uh, different from you, including me, traditional answers. So we need to change from that. So uh, we need to make that into interactive classes. Okay, so here is an example of uh, uh, somebody, a teacher who's sitting down and they're working in groups and also uh, making uh, the preparing for the lessons. Now preparing for the lessons is not our chronicle alone. Look at the teaching aids that they are making. So you can make charts for your class. Okay, visual aids, because many children are visual. The moment you bring a chart, they are excited. Oh, today ma'am has got a chart. If you're just good going there with nothing, then oh, this is a normal class. Or you prepare some uh, PPT. Now, since there is a lot of online classes, preparation of PPT. And now, even if you go to school, if you have a, a projector in your class, you can project those PPTs. Visual learning is very, very important and very easy for children to understand rather than seeing our boring faces every day day and night, 365 days of the year, it will be better that the learning takes place in a multi-dimension way, right? So charts, visuals, videos, uh, photo story, you know, you create uh, small uh, visuals with photo story, Microsoft photo story, it's a good app uh, to, uh, you know, uh, for smaller kids especially, create a story, okay? Through story, we give word problems, okay? They, they'll be interested, oh, ma'am, today there is no maths class, today there is a story, and Indirectly, at the end of that, you will put a question. Okay, this guy went to the shop and this happened, this happened. You will frame those questions and put five questions to the child. Okay, so the children are interested. They listen to the story. And then what is happening? You are putting up four or five questions based on that. It's, it's like a case study. So in higher classes, in case study, what happens? It becomes a very serious affair. In smaller kids, uh, we can show videos and then ask uh, questions on that, right? So that I'll be demonstrating also some uh, through some videos. Okay, so everyone likes to play games. That is a fact. Children's body language are different when they go out. So if you are allowing them to today is free period, go and play. Oh my God, they'll jump and you know howl and play at that. So in the classroom, we can have so many games. So some of them I'm going to uh, discuss today, uh, which you can put in your game. So as I promised, I will be giving you a lot of games, but at the same time, depending on your class, you'll have to modify that as per your classes. Okay. So uh, the one of the common ways in which uh, we can teach multiples or tables is ping pong. Okay, so ping pong is like, for example, uh, uh, you are having 40 students in the class. Many of you must have already played. So I will start with, let's say, number one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the normal way of, uh, you know, numbering, right? So instead of doing one, two, three, four, now what happens is that the moment one, you will say, then two, Every multiple of two, the child has to say ping. Okay, so one, two, two is ping, and every multiple of three is pong. So multiple means the tables of two and three. So as the, uh, uh, so for example, you're doing tables of two and three now. So roll number one will say one. The next uh, child who is sitting, they will say not two, they will say ping. Three will say pong. What will four say? Ping, ping, he'll ping, say ping. Correct. Four will say ping and five will say pong. No, five will not say pong. Oh, five, five will say, say five the itself. number itself. Five the yes, number yes, itself. Yes. Because pong. five is neither <laughs> right. a multiple of two. Six will become any guesses? Pong, 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 pong. Ping. Pong, ping, pong. Ah, pong. exactly, ma'am. So six will ping become pong. ping pong. Why? Because oh, it's a multiple right. of two as well as three. So the child will, so what is very interesting now. So one, Two will, they will not say two, they will say ping, then will come pong, then what will happen, they will say, uh, instead of four, they will say ping, five will remain, five as it is, six becomes ping pong, seven as it is, eight will become ping, nine will become pong, pong. 
ten will become ping, eleven will become eleven uh, as 11. it is, twelve will become ping pong. Again, ping, ping pong. pong. Okay, so what will happen? The children will really enjoy, especially the. I have no idea. Hello. So as the kids are going to. uh as the uh, if whatever classes you are dealing with so if you are dealing with very small kids we can do it 2 3 the same can be done with multiples of 5 6 7 8 so with bigger classes so depending on the class 1 2 3 4 5 uh, you know where the tables and we can charge you can do that nahi bhai recharge kar liya ek hi kar liya to sim pe tum abhi loge na nahi sim pe loge to kaam usse kya right Okay, I think Dolly Mam's mic was on. So anyway, so <clears throat> yeah, fine. So what happens is that so uh, I hope this game is clear. So now we can do let's say uh, instead of two three, we are doing four and five. So bigger kids will do one two three. Four becomes ping. Five becomes pong. Then six seven eight. We are doing multiples of four. Eight becomes your ping. Nine as it is. Ten becomes Pong eleven as it is, twelve will become ping thirteen, fourteen fifteen will become pong like that. What will happen is that you can create games of any multiple. So the moment it's a common multiple of the two numbers, then what will happen? You will have to say ping pong. So if you are doing for three four, your twelve will become ping pong. Okay, so that's a that's a a game that can be done with smaller kids to learn tables. and they want to enjoy you can do this over and over again with different uh, numbers so uh, second is sudoku simple sudokus can be created not the ones which are printed simple sudokus can be created because this is this is all something which so even for this ping pong being they do really think of what they have to say and they are very excited when then uh, they are actually there is a uh, there is a fear of what they are going to say and there is excitement fear not because of the wrong answer because of the excitement they are very excited what it will be and uh, nobody wins or loses this game it's a participating game in all these games remember there is no winner or loser because otherwise the crux of the people will not be able to enjoy if you create tension if you create competition the idea is that everybody enjoys right uh, sudoku is uh, uh, you already know that nine square you can um, as per your class make it very simple and probably at the end of your class sometimes what happens our topics are uh, finished and 10 uh, minutes are left you can give a sudoku on the board and ask them to complete it math race it's something very good math race is like something like uh, for example uh, uh, if you take them to the ground or anywhere you can uh, do and what happens is that uh, let's say um, uh, there is a uh, uh, 40 minute period and you say okay 20 minutes i have taught you this now i am going to give you a very simple question uh, based on what i have taught all those who are doing this uh, uh, question or they can do whatever work they want okay so what happens is that as soon as they complete their work their work is over and they are free so they, they get a free period or if you are taking them to the field you create a physical race okay what is the race they will run for let's say 50 meters uh, they are putting their notebook and pen there and you have put a sum there and they are solving the sum and then they are running ahead so what is happening for smaller kids this is an excitement they are running also and the excitement also to do that sum okay so it could be simple sum don't give very tough sums it could be like just like 32 plus 23 depending on the class i'm saying not very complicated sums that you 20 minutes <laughs> is sitting down in the ground and solving no something which is like which you have taught and some basic stuff like that bounce ball questions very good again for the elementary level uh, you can create a circle uh, if there is space in your class or take them out and uh, bounce ball question uh, you know your uh, the ball is passed to any student okay suppose there is a student nikhil and you throw that ball okay nikhil and you ask him a question very simple question then nikhil throws to uh, nikhil throws it back to the teacher the teacher will take another uh, person's name and there will be some question so bounce ball questions children really enjoy for smaller kids uh, smaller then dice is very good uh, uh, it's easy to procure dice and what you need is two dice with and one dice with mathematical operations so mathematical operation means on the six side there should be the four operation plus minus division multiplication and uh, uh, then if they are older kids you can put square root symbol cube root symbol and all that depending on what right so two dice uh, two dice are there and then what happens you are rolling the dice start with the four basic operation you are rolling the dice on one dice the number 6 comes 
on another uh, dice number 6 comes and in between there is a dice which has got the mathematical operations so that could be plus so you will ask the child what is 6 plus 6 they will tell you 12 or 6 into 6 36 so three dice we'll throw and we'll get the answer that is the uh, uh, dice estimation believe me uh, dear friends that estimation is very very important in today's times and you will be surprised that students have no idea of estimation today the majority of them if you tell them what is the they will know everything about meter centimeter inches everything and you ask them what is the height of this classroom uh, many of them will not be able to even guess estimation is very poor or i have a glass of water what is the volume of water in that and what are we doing all this maths for if they can't estimate because math one of the basic aims of maths is estimation so we need to give them a a, a sense a perception of idea and how do we do that okay uh, what could be the approximate weight of this? You are picking up a glass of water. You are picking up a mobile phone. Something which is there. You are picking up a, a pencil box. A table. What is the weight of this? Uh, what is the volume of this? What is the height of this? What is the length of your table? Okay. They, you start with the table because they are sitting there. Okay. What do you think, boys? Are, uh, uh, children, what do you think is the length of the table? Okay. They will analyze it. I think the length of the table is uh, 24 inches. Okay. Uh, tell them to convert into centimeter. Okay, then they will say how to do it. They are wondering how to do it. You may give a hint. Okay, your big scale is 12 inches. It has got 30 centimeter. Okay, 60 centimeter. Okay, you think that your benches are 60 centimeter. Now measure. Now measure. And what is going to happen? It may come 70, it may come 80, or it may come 50, and somebody may be coming close to that also. So there is, they get a sense of recognition. Okay, my estimation was correct. And when you do this activity for a lot, for many days, what will happen? They'll come, they'll start, their estimation becomes very good because that's very important. Because nowadays, if you ask kids, what is the height of this building? They'll give vague answers, which has no meaning at all, okay? Because they don't imagine what is a meter, what is a feet, what is a centimeter. Imagination is not there. They are just blindly converting. One meter is 100 centimeter without knowing what is one meter, what is one centimeter, what is one inch. So it's very important estimation. Give a lot of questions on weight, volume, and uh, length, area, perimeter. All this can be done on their benches. They are sitting on a bench. You find, tell them to find the area. Have you ever done? Uh, you will give lots of questions uh, on the board. But uh, the best is uh, students, can you measure the estimate first? Length and breadth of the table. Okay, this is the estimation. Okay, now you compare and now you tell me what will be the area of the desk. What will be the perimeter? So they are actually doing, they'll find it interesting. And they, uh, you don't have to even take them out. Whatever is that? It could be with a pencil box. It could be with a desk, whatever. Stand and sit. This is also a very, very interesting game. So suppose what happens is children know after sitting down, <laughs> they'll get bored. So every time you will find one fellow roaming around in the class, especially with the smaller kids, I think. I'm sure those who are teaching in primary, you will find making them sit down at one place is actually difficult and it's unnatural for kids, right? Because they, they have the habit of moving around. Now, when they come back to school, it will become all the more difficult because they have, they have not sat in a classroom for one whole year. So standing and sitting, very good to break the monotony of your classes. What can be done? Okay. Uh, I am doing a question and this, this, this. Okay. So you will give an MCQ question now. How many of you think that 2x is a binomial? <clears throat> okay. I'm just giving you an example. How many of you think that 2 exists a binomial? Stand up. How many of you think <clears throat> that 2 plus 2 is 4? Stand up. How many of you think that uh, 3 plus 5 is 8? Stand up. Okay, so what will happen? There will be standing and sitting. There will be some uh, activity in the class. So any questions you can give and you can do the stand and sit. So you will have to prepare a series of questions. Let's say 7, 8 questions. And then in every question you can uh, ask them. If you know this answer, stand. If you don't know this answer, uh, uh, sit. And there will be some fellows, remember, who will never stand. They will sit down continuously. So you'll have to make a note of uh, those kids who are not participating at all. And then you'll ask them, what do you think about this? Yes, you're, you're not standing for anything. What is your opinion? You, uh, you know, then they will feel, ah, ma'am is watching me that I am not standing in any of these. Okay. So you have to uh, uh, ask questions, make them stand and sit. Right. <clears throat> okay, learning from nature. This is the most, uh, I think, the yeah, best yeah. form of learning is from nature. There cannot be any other learning uh, 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 that cannot happen from nature. Early, even if you look at the early Greeks, where did they learn everything? From nature. Uh, 
Uh, they didn't have technology at that time, 2000 years, 3000. We study the same geometry that the Greeks gave 2000 years by Euclid, Pythagoras. Uh, do you think they had advanced technology and computers to do this? They had only raw brains to think and they did everything on sand probably. Paper, pen never existed at that point of time. So learning from nature, what happens in nature? All the science and maths that is existing today is happening in nature, okay? So you uh, take them out <clears throat> for a stroll. Okay, what do you see? You see a school building. What do you see? Windows. What are the shapes of this? Uh, you, you are seeing a dome in this picture. You can show pictures also if you are uh, not convenient, if your school doesn't allow to take them outside. Uh, for smaller kids, I'm sure the school allow, but for bigger kids, because of XYZ reasons, some schools may not allow. Show them pictures. Okay, what do you see in this? That's a beautiful building. Tell some historical facts about the building. They will get interested. Oh, now you will come to the question. Look at that dome. What do you think is the shape of that dome? What is the shape of that uh, base? Okay. So suppose if 100 people are sitting in there, how much of air per person, uh, uh, you know, air will one person get? You can make questions on that. So a lot of questions can be devised based on questions uh, which they see from nature. Another very good, uh, when you're teaching geometry for the first time, when do you teach geometry uh, at the first time? I think from the very elementary classes, there is a basic concept of geometry uh, from at least from class four, five, six, they continuously keep on talking about geometry. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is another game, Simon says. Now, si whatever Simon says, you have to do, okay? So it's like a clock, okay? The clock is there. And then if suppose uh, 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 the, you say 80 degrees, okay? So 80 degrees means with the arms, you will have to show 80 degrees. All the children have to show 80 degrees because many children are getting confused between acute angles and obtuse angles. So they, if you are measuring with the protector, what happens? They don't know whether 80 is from the right side or 80 is from the left side. It's a common problem. That's because they don't know acute and obtuse. So when this game is practiced, uh, geometrical angle, so 90 degrees, they know exactly 90 degrees is, I have to uh, be exactly like this. I am acute means my angle has to be less. Okay, I'm showing you uh, uh, this way. So acute means small angle, uh, obtuse means this is a straight angle. So we'll have to explain with the arms. I am showing with just arms, but they can do it with their hands because they are small kids. So they can show with arms. So the teacher will just announce an angle. So 40 degrees. So everyone, again, estimation, what is 40 degrees approximately? They should know. Like as teachers, we know, no, when we give geometry question, construct 40, we don't measure with a protractor. We know, okay, this is 40. If somebody has made 70, we'll easily know that it's not 40. Same way kids should understand that